What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be ranking some of your favorite folding knife locking systems from Legend to Poo Poo Town as you can see on the left side of the screen here. Now uh, I really want people to pay attention to the intro so that you guys understand exactly how I'm ranking these and there's no confusion. Number one, this is just my opinion and really this video is just for fun. It's all based on locks that I have experienced. So while I have 35 locks here, I want people to understand I'm not ranking every folding knife lock in existence. I'm only ranking the ones that I have experienced you know, physically with knives here on this channel. Also, this ranking system is not purely based on strength alone. And I know that that's gonna throw some people out of whack. That is one of the elements, uh, strength, reliability, uh, and then of course, ease of manipulation. And then there's a little bit of cool factor, right? I'm gonna be a little biased towards some of these because I just like them better, but it's the combination of all of those, um, you know, the, the best combinations that's going to rank um, certain locking systems the highest. So hopefully that's cleared up. Sit back, relax, have some fun. Maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. Um, I don't have all of the details about every single one of these locks, so some of these are going to be more confident ranks than others. Um, but in any case, I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore uh, complex. Let's go ahead and start off with a super simple one. How about the basic liner lock, right? Now, obviously some companies make a liner lock that is better or more reliable than others. Uh, and that's gonna be, it's gonna make some of these rankings a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky because there's just more detail than I can really put into a video like this, right? So uh, a liner lock for me, I think is uh, very easy to manipulate. Um, I think it is not a super strong or reliable across the board lock, but I think it works just fine. That's I think that's the most appropriate way to rank a liner lock is fine. Uh, I think also, you know what? I'm actually going to bump that up a little bit more because I realize I do actually prefer a liner lock over a frame lock and I'll tell you why. It's because the liner is underneath, generally speaking, underneath a scale, which means during use while you're squeezing it, uh, even though it might not have as much surface contact as a frame lock, I would argue that it is generally speaking, nearly as strong because a frame lock is only going to be as strong as its relief cut, even if it has a little bit more surface contact. It's obviously not very scientific, right? But I do like on a liner lock that when you squeeze the knife during use, you're not actually mashing that lock further into the tang of the blade, the locking face of the blade. A frame lock is generally exposed, which means any grip strength or any grip pressure is going to push that lock in further. I don't really like that. Uh, I don't. I, I prefer a liner lock for the the way that I use a folding knife. Right? How about the um, old school spine or back lock? Um, like uh, I guess what you would see on the Buck 110. I'm gonna go with Matt. Those are really strong. Right? Here's a great example of a strong lock that's not going to be ranked very high because ease of manipulation and I guess the fun factor or cool factor, the manipulation of it. Personally, I don't like that very much. And let's, let's, I want to remind everybody this list is based on my opinion, not the universal collective opinion of the entire knife community dating back 50 years. It's just my opinion. So, you personally, if you would rank that higher, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to agree with me. Spine and backlock knives is just always a little, it's a few extra steps, a little bit more of a hassle for me. I'm just not. In, I personally like to manipulate my knives with one hand, open and close. The triad lock. Uh, <laughs> I bet you guys thought that I would save that one, and you were right. I'm not going to do that one just yet. I'm going to move on to the axis lock. I also am going to put axis lock under glad it exists, and the only reason that I have an issue with it, uh, these are axis like this is all encompassing. So all crossbar locks, right, because the, the original, this was a Benchmade thing, and then the patent ended, and now every company has their own you know, like Kaiser has the clutch lock and, you know, Hogue has the able lock. It's all the same thing. I'm talking about crossbar locks that operate with Omega Springs. They're great. They they don't usually fail. They can, right? Usually have to be, kind of be abusive with it, which is the same with most of these locks. You kind of have to be going overboard. The only thing that I don't like about a general, like the, the basic axis lock are the Omega Springs. And while personally, admittedly, I've never actually had an Omega Spring fail, I hear about that happening all the time. And 
as as easy as they are to replace, right? I mean, you can just get another Omega Spring, or they have the company. It's it's when it if it does happen, it sucks because your knife is like really not all that trustworthy with one Omega Spring, and it's totally useless if both of them break. So um, it is great. I like them. They're very strong, very reliable. They're super easy to manipulate, and they are ambidextrous, right? That's what's getting them ranked up here, much higher than something like a spine or back lock. Um, let's uh, let's talk about coil spring crossbar locks. Um, those are way better. That's going to be the first legend here. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's look to the Benchmade Anthem. Oh my God, Benchmade, why why are you not? There's a, like this is such a good locking system. This has more than enough strength, right? It has all the strength. It has everything that a typical axis lock has. But in but it doesn't have the weakness, like the, the, the longevity weakness of the Omega Springs. A coil spring is factually going to be superior. It has a much lower chance of failure. In fact, I can't say I've ever heard of a coil spring on a knife unless you just like leave it in the ocean and come back like 10 years later. Well, yeah, it's probably crap by then, but yeah, the uh, the Anthem, the Benchmade Anthem had a coil spring operated crossbar lock. Beautiful system, beautiful system. I love it. I think it's excellent. Um, let's um, also talk about, no, 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 no. Let's do, um, what's a good one? Mid back lock. Somebody pointed out in the community tab, you should have mid back locks like on Spyderco knives. Uh, in a different category than the spine and back lock, um, like the, what you'd find on the Buck 110, because they do feel different and they are a little bit different in terms of manipulation. And I thought about that and realized that person's exactly right. They do feel different. They are um, a little bit easier to manipulate. I, and I, I don't know that they're any stronger, but um, for somebody like me, especially in combination with an opening hole on a spider crow knife, because that's when we're like the specific example that I'm using here, um, they are actually easier to manipulate. I don't love them. But I will put them in fine, and I'll rank them a little higher, personally, than the spine or back lock, right? Uh, how about compression locks? Uh, the compression lock is definitely a huge win. The only thing that's holding it back is the fact that it's not technically an ambidextrous locking system. Um, while left-handed people can fairly easily manipulate a, a standard compression lock, which is made for a right-handed person, um, they generally, they, they do make like lefty models of these, but the compression lock is a wonderful system. I think the best thing about the compression lock is the fact that the patent has also ended on that. So now we're seeing like the top, and when I say compression lock, I'm also lumping in like Vossied's top liner lock because it's the same thing, right? We're, we're gonna have a whole bunch of companies coming out with their own compression lock. In fact, I admittedly tried to do this with my own knife design. The company that I'm working with, I was like, hey, can we implement the compression lock into this? It's a little tricky. You know, we didn't get it this time around, maybe in the future, but there's lots of companies that are going to be implementing their own compression locks and they're all going to be the same thing. So I'm not going to say Vosteed's compression lock or this company's compression. We're going to do all compression locks right here. I think they're excellent. They are plenty strong, more than strong enough for what you would normally use a knife for. They're very easy, especially in the case of Spider Co's compression lock or like some of these button operated compression locks are just really wonderful. The way they engage uh, with multiple points of contact and the way that they disengage, um, I just think they're beautiful. Uh, really, really love those. Um, let's talk about the button lock. I think that's definitely a good one. So ease of manipulation on a button lock is off the charts, right? That's where this lock is going to score super duper high. Reliability, long-term, and strength, though, I, I, no. I, I, they're on the other end, for sure. So this ends up kind of being a in-between fine and glad it exists. So I have to go with my gut. How much do I personally enjoy them? I think for somebody who's going to take their knife out and really beat on it, right? A button lock is a bad idea. And when I say button lock, I mean a plunge lock where you are dependent on this cylindrical geometry engaging with the the lock face of the blade that's carved out for that area. These slip, right? They're so heavily dependent on geometry and even the best of them aren't super great in terms of strength. Now, for people like me who just use a knife for like regular stuff, like opening boxes and packages and not really like beating on their knives, right? Um, that, you know, higher chance of failure doesn't matter as much to me. Um, but I still kind of want to include all of these, as many perspectives as I can, and then ultimately lean heavily into my own perspective when I rank these. So a button lock, 
I'm going to say glad it exists. I do feel like for me personally, the ease of manipulation counts for a little bit more here. But I cannot, I could never put, I mean, truthfully, if there was like a category between these two, that's kind of where I'd put the button lock, right? Um, let's do something weird. The V anchor lock. That's the new thing from um, Vosteed. I really like that one. I think it's really cool. Uh, it's very easy to manipulate and it seems to be very, very durable. However, I will admit, I don't know the extent of that thing's durability. It seems like a really great idea and it seems like something that will, will probably be uh, a successful thing for not only Vosteed, but other companies that will inevitably, you know, kind of try to do the same thing in the future. For now, I'm going to rank the V-Anchor lock as a huge win, um, but it, it, I've only experienced it on one prototype, right? So that's kind of asterisk there. Um, let's see here. The deadbolt lock, that would be the CRKT thing. Um, the problem with that is that was something that I love. It's not the same thing as the V-Anchor lock, but the manipulation of it is right there on the pivot. And that makes me really want it to be an enjoyable experience. I know factually that the deadbolt lock is very, very strong. But what I also know is that I've never experienced one that was actually really fun to use or that felt super convenient. It was always kind of, it just felt like a, a cog that needed better lubrication, right? It just didn't feel as good as I wanted it to. I'm going to call it fine because I think it's still a very, very reliable locking system for the knives that it's implemented on, which are exclusively CRKT knives, right? It's all right. Uh, how about the, um, <laughs> see that we're splitting hairs here with some of these. And I'm, I'm doing this because I know people will bring this up. The button operated liner lock is legitimately the exact same reliability and strength as your generic liner lock. Again, depending on who's making it and how much attention is on the geometry. Um, I'm going to put that under glad it exists too. You're not manipulating it in the same spot. Uh, there are pros and cons to having the button on the face of the scales, right? Depending on your grip and which hand you're using and where the button's located, it could be more or less reliable because squeezing it, choking up, you might accidentally disengage it. Whereas a regular liner lock, it's much, much, you know, less likely to disengage with hand pressure because of where you have to disengage the lock. So I'm going to put it under glad it exists. I do like those. I think they're cool. Um, how about the ball bearing lock from Spyderco? Uh, yeah, I'm going to call that one a huge win as well. That is a, I really wish Spyderco would go. The only thing that kind of sucks about that is it is a lot because that I remember like on Manix 2s, the shape of the switch is good. And I think that's what allows you to overcome that tension from the spring. But once that ball, it's, it's literally like a, a an axis lock in terms of actuation, but it's a coil spring and the, the, the the, uh, the switch has like a peg and that peg is, has a coil spring wrapped around it, right? And then in between the switch is a literally a ball bearing and they, it, that spring pushes the switch up and the cage, I guess is what they call it, it pushes it up and it's, it pushes that ball bearing behind the lock face of the blade and it is like ridiculously strong. Um, I like it. It is slightly awkward to manipulate, right? And anybody who's owned the Manix 2 knows this. But it is, the thing that saves it is, again, that tall blade and that big opening hole in the, um, the Spyderco knife. So it does have a, a pretty satisfying opening and a less satisfying closing. But in terms of manipulation overall, it's pretty good. And reliability and strength is very good. Um, I'm going to definitely, confidently put that one under huge win. It's also ambidextrous. I don't like it as much as this. This is easier, in my opinion, to manipulate. Uh, the Benchmade Anthem was easier to manipulate than the um, Spyderco Manix 2 or any other knives that utilize that locking system, which I'm unaware of. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, those, that's where I want to put those. Uh, let's see. The double tab lock from Midgard's Messer. Uh, <laughs> that's the one that's on the Valhalla. Um, I, uh, that thing is not very strong. That knife is cool. The way that the, this is such an obscure one. It's so weird, right? But I, it's a, it's a different locking system that I've experienced. So I want to put this on here. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go look up the Midgard's Messer Valhalla. The cool part about that is that the knife extends, the blade extends itself further out from the handle than you would expect because of the pivot mechanism. The lock itself is literally two tabs that are 
they're under tension when the blade is closed. And then when you open it up, these two tabs have space to kind of pop out and get behind the, um, I guess, the rounded uh, part of the back of the blade. Uh, I do not think those are very strong. They're two little tabs that are screwed in to the knife. The locking system itself has nothing to do with manipulation because you literally have to pull the blade out. So it's definitely like a two-handed operation. And I very much doubt they are super reliable. I think that knife is mostly novelty. It's very cool. I don't think that they designed it like, oh, this is supposed to be super strong. And it's like a brand new system that's going to like, you know, push the knife industry to the edge of, you know, it, no, no. But it's not, an, it's not a very good locking system. Uh, I don't, I don't like, I think it's cool, right? Uh, it's definitely cooler than the ring lock on open L knives. Boy, uh, I've been doing this for six years now. Am I ready? Am I ready to finally let the open L breathe? No, I'm not. That is poo poo town. Uh, there are 550,000 subscribers on this channel and I... I'll, I would bet after 24 hours this video will get about 20,000 views. Maybe. I don't know. I just need you guys to know, no matter how much pressure you put on me, I will never change my opinion about that ring lock. I hate that knife. That's the reason. Part of the reason. So it's like the biggest reason that I don't like the open L. I acknowledge that the open L is a um, time-tested uh, economic tool. Right? It's a good fit. It's not like 10 bucks. 15 bucks may be right. Uh, fine. I hate it. Stupid cork wood knife with a basic blade and it just takes so long to turn, open it with two hands, turn the ring, and then lock it. Oh my God. It's for the birds, man. That is, I don't like it. And I am allowed to not like it. I don't have to, like, change my perspective and suddenly like something that I don't like just because other people like it. No, it's okay. You can like it and I cannot like it. I don't like it. The ring lock works. Uh, I think it's fairly reliable. Ease of manipulation and cool factor is in the dumpster. It is in the dumpster. In fact, it's in a dumpster buried 500 miles beneath the surface of the earth where it belongs mentally right up here i hate it um but you know hey uh, i i wish nothing but success to the open l company i think that they obviously have a ton of customers and regardless of what i think they will probably continue to be a successful company because they are right they don't need my permission to be successful they already are uh but i hate it <laughs> i think it sucks um moving on here the shark lock uh oh, it's easy legend the shark lock is the triad lock but way easier to manipulate. Oh, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Where's she going to rank the triad lock? She better rank it high. I, I'm starting to think he's dragging this out. I'm starting to think that he's not going to rank the triad lock anytime soon. Maybe I will. Don't jump around. Uh, the shark lock. Yeah, incredibly strong. It operates on a coil spring. Um, that, you know, it can be a little bit sharp on the edges. So some people say that it's an ergonomic hotspot when you're choking up. And it's a little bit. I think sometimes people are a little overdramatic with that. Uh, but I think very circumstantially that can be the case. Uh, but for the most part, the shark lock is wonderful. Uh, at the same time, so is the super lock. A lot of people, um, uh, well, what I want to say is the truth. A lot of people have been, um, you know, weeping into their blouse about, uh, what they, <laughs> what I should say is a lot of people have been complaining. Um, but what it sounds like from my perspective is weeping, heavy weeping, um, about how the um, shark lock copied the super lock or how the super lock copied the shark lock. Apparently both locks were in development for a long time, like in secret. I think the shark lock I heard was in development for like 10 years. Uh, like he was like slowly kind of changing and working on it. Um, and they both just kind of released at the same time. Uh, from as far as I can tell, neither Snex nor Demco uh, have any sort of resentment towards each other. I think it's just like a, a fringe population of people who uh, just really love like digging a hole and filling it with uh, tears and sorrow, and they like to wallow in it um, in uh, you know spaghetti sauce and their wizard's robes. And I just think they're being a little bit dramatic. 
Um, I think they're both excellent. They both definitely feel unique. Um, if I'm being honest, I think the best implementation of the Super Lock was on the Vision FG. And um, my favorite implementation of the Shark Lock was on the 8020. Uh, it's very hard for me to say I- exactly which one I like more. I think I would lean more towards the 8020, the bigger one with the Shark Lock, because it just feels so robust. Um, but the Super Lock is beautifully easy to manipulate. And in my opinion, the best dollar for dollar knife in existence is the Vision FG. I make sure that you guys know about that all the time. It's an $80 knife. Nitro V Blade Steel made by Civibi. Uh, Super Lock, ambidextrous. It's a wonderful knife. Wonderful. So they both are legend, right? The only, the only uh, locks that are going to get legend status uh, are knives that can be easily manipulated left and right hand that are reliable, strong, right? Have the cool factor. Like these all have those. That's going to be up there. Um, the deadlock, which is only on the deadlock. Did you know that? The Hawk deadlock, the only OTF in existence. We'll see what Microtech does. Apparently they got some kind of secret weapon. Well, we'll see. Uh, but the deadlock in, in the, developed by Hawk Knives, which despite what um, Benchmade Infidel fans will tell you, is the only locking system currently that will reliably deploy the ba- blade on an OTF and lock it out with absolutely zero blade play. Um, other systems that have you know tried either have issues with deployment or they're not completely locking out solid. Uh, or even the ones that are really, really great still have a little bit of blade play, but that deadlock is strong. And um, this has been tested. Advanced Knife Bro uh, did some pretty heavy testing on the deadlock Model B and C, I believe, on his channel, and it is impressive. So while that a lot of people would argue, like, you just said it has to be ambidextrous, I mean, it is. Like, if you look at the Hawk deadlock, right or left-handed, the manipulation of it is the same. The switch is going to be, you know, on the thumb, right or left-handed. Um, so it is, right? It's not like in the same area, like I guess given the frame, it's not like located on the spine or on both sides, but it can be manipulated equally left or right-handed. The deadlock, which is specific to the deadlock model, is wonderful. Um, on the subject of Hawk, I also have, um, I think it's just called the Hawk Lock. Yeah, the Hawk Lock is wonderful. If you own the Rook, which very people, very few people do, it's not, it's not an ambi locking system though, because the Hawk Lock's just one t- <coughs> tab on one side. It is a huge W. Incredibly strong and beautifully. Oh, the joy! I know so few of you have um, ever had an Orbit or a a Rook, right? Uh, but those of you who have experienced it, that Hawk Lock is so cool, man. It is absurdly strong. It is super clicky, super reliable, super fidgety, very easy to manipulate. It has all of that stuff. A lot of people, I think, like to say, well, if it's real fidgety and it's real clicky clacky, um, then that's just all show. And, you know, it can't possibly also be in the category of reliable and convenient. The Hawk Lock is a perfect example of why that perspective is wrong. It can be fidgety and fun to manipulate and kind of a thing that you just enjoy, right? Tickles the senses. But at the same time, it can also be very, very strong um, and uh, extremely reliable. The Hawk Lock is definitely that. Um, Not perfectly ambidextrous, but super duper cool. The Ram Lock. Um, I'll tell you what. If there was a category between Huge W and Legend, I would put, for me personally, I have never had the Microtech Ram Lock, which is a lot like the Coil Spring Crossbar Lock. God, it's almost exactly the same thing. You know what? I am, because this is my experience with it. I've Apparently, a few people had them fail. Now, a lot of people, I think, are just pretending that Microtech is not trying to implement this. They are clearly evolving it. They've had so many different versions of the. If you look at like the Ramlock that came out initially, in fact, I have a an older Ramlock stitch and a newer Ramlock stitch. They're different sizes. Microtech is obviously changing and you know messing with this and releasing newer versions of it, probably to uh, you know minimize the number of failures with this thing. Um, There were people having some failures with the Ramlock initially. I don't hear about it as much anymore. I've had tons of Ramlocks on this channel, 
and have showcased every single time I unbox one, they don't fail with light to medium spine pressure or spine impact, right? Now, if I swing it as hard as I could against a solid surface, would it disengage? Well, yeah, but I venture to guess most of these would too. I'm not sure that really proves anything. My Ramlocks have all, all been great. They are easy to manipulate outside of not having that sort of breakaway detent that I love about, you know, liner locks and frame locks. Um, but they do feel wonderful. I don't quite love it as much, I think, as some of these over here. But I do, I do very much like it. And I love that it's, you know, it, 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 it's its own thing. It feels different than an axis lock. And I love that it's a coil spring. That's the reason it's up here with these other locks, right, and not down here with the compression lock, uh, which operates on a coil spring. I think that this is still more reliable overall. Um, I do love that ram lock. I think it's very cool. Um, the M lock, I, I forget which, so this is winter blade. The uh, winter blade M lock, and then there's also the stealth lock. The stealth lock is on the Severn. Wonderful. Uh, you know what? It's going up here, because isn't that on both sides? <laughs> yeah. Stealth lock, excellent. Uh, the M lock, the only reason it's not outside, this is the one on the factor, is because I believe it's only on one side, but a lot of people would argue like that you don't, like the knife can easily be manipulated with. You know what? The, now the the M lock and the stealth lock are both legend. I, I I'm breaking my own rules. Those things are so freaking cool, man. And they operate magnetically but differently. The M lock has a different magnetic assist and lockup feature than the stealth lock, but they're both so good, and they're so unique. There is nothing else like. I mean, like yeah, you could say the engagement is like similar to some of these other ones, but. Dude, these are so good. We listen a lot. Of, you guys might be saying, "Man, you're like being real easy on some of these locks." You got so many under legend. That's the knife world we live in right now. We don't live in this knife world anymore. It's just where everything's like, you know, it's like we we made a new knife, right? Oh, cool. They don't even ask what lock it is because it's this. That was the old world. We live in this world now, right? Um, <laughs> this is so cool that we have so many. I mean, I, yeah, that's how I honestly feel. The roundhouse lock on the truffles. I think that's a huge win. Um, I have only got to play with it just a little bit, right? I think it's really, really cool. And it's a cool idea for the same reason that the V-anchor lock is a cool idea. Um, it doesn't operate the same way as the V-anchor lock. Or, I'm sorry, it doesn't engage or operate this exactly the same way as the V-anchor or the deadbolt lock. Uh, but it feels way, way better than the deadbolt. It just does. Atlas lock, also legend. That is, <laughs> that's Cold Steel's shark lock. I mean, come on. Uh, really cool. Double pin system. Only experienced one knife with it. God, it was awesome. So cool, man. I want them to bring back the American Lawman and put an Atlas lock on it. Who, who else would love that? Can you imagine? Oh my gosh, man. Give me the American Lawman with an Atlas lock. Charge me 150 bucks for it. You got it. You got it, man. Uh, I love. I think the Atlas lock is super cool. Um, the general OTF tab lock. If you ever see a, a picture of like a Microtech um, Ultratech that's been taken apart and that little tab that sort of slips into place in the open position, surprisingly strong. Yes, testing is extensive. Testing has been done. Um, X Ring on YouTube has done demolition tests on like uh, OTF models like the Ultratech, and it's not just Microtech's line, which have they've proven to be very strong. If you are part of the crowd of people who looks at an OTF and goes, "Yeah, cool, but it's just a toy. It's not a reliable," you just don't know. Uh, you've never seen the testing videos, or you're basing that opinion off of the cheap stuff that you find at gun shows, right? That this. Super duper cheap OTFs, uh, really well made American OTFs. Uh, stuff from Guardian Tactical, obviously Hawk knives. Micro Hawk is a different tier because uh, it's custom. Microtech knives, Axial, uh, Kershaw's OTFs, Hogue's OTFs. Yes, even Benchmade's sloppy hot dog falling out of the bun. Uh, you know, Infidel. <laughs> <laughs> the Infidel's fine, but you're kidding yourself if you like the deployment. 
This, I'm going to do my impression of the Benchmade Infidel deploying. Full flaw. That's what it. That's what it feels like. Like like you're if you're like running with a hot dog, and the hot dog like falls out of the bun. That's what it feels like to deploy the Benchmade Infidel. It's not very good. And then and then the <laughs> the blade play on that right, the super solid blade play is just <laughs> it's flopping around in there. But the tab locking the blade out, despite what the um, blade play would suggest, is actually very, very reliable. I mean, like, X-Ring pounded that blade into a piece of wood, right? I've even seen the guy uh, who uh, runs um, Grindworks do that with the Lightning OTF, which operates with a similar locking system. So that um, that uh, tab lock, the, gen the general OTF tab lock, I'm lumping a lot of things together. I'm also going to put that under huge win. I think that's a great locking system. The Scorpion lock. Um, so that lock kind of scares me. It is ridiculously strong. And it's, I wouldn't say it's more convenient to manipulate than um, like, a, a, you know, a back lock. Uh, it, it, it makes me nervous because of the way that, and this is a Demco lock again. It is ridiculously strong. Arguably one of the strongest locking systems up here. But the way that it's manipulated, like I feel fine with two hands. But if you try to manipulate it with one hand, I'm like, mm, there's a 10% chance my finger's coming off. You get better at it. It just, I have one here with um, original goat scales on it and I love it. It's super cool. But I've never gotten to the point where I want to carry it all the time. Because every time I open it, I'm kind of like, ugh. Oh, you know, maybe I'm just being a weenie. I am glad it exists, though. It's cool. The pill lock. That's that thing on the Riot XO or the whoever in, in, invented the XO. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The way that they um, the way that they implemented that. Um, it's very specific to one knife uh, and it allows with the addition of the safety. So the pill thing is what's keeping it in place when the thing's closed, but what keeps the frame closed, like on the XOM, is the addition of the safety, which is necessary, right? So it's really cool and it's pretty easy to manipulate. It has one extra step. I'm gonna put that in, glad it exists as well. I don't think it's nearly as strong as some of this stuff, but I think it's plenty reliable, especially when uh, you have the secondary switch locked out. But if you accidentally disengage that secondary switch, then the frame can open up, right? As long as the frame is closed, there's contact all the way around that pill, right, on both sides. So, yeah. The Frankenstein lock on the T-1000, that is a, it's an automatic secondary stop pin. Uh, or no, it's not automatic. You still have to push them in. So, it's a frame lock with an extra, uh, two extra stop pins that you push in, you pinch in. If you want to talk about Riot T-1000 and the Riot T6000. It's not actually called the Frankenstein lock. That's why it's in, close, uh, in quotes. I just call it that, you know, to save myself from having to explain it like I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, I think it's a great system. There's a video somewhere on YouTube of somebody batoning with it and showing that uh, after each impact, these two stop pins slowly creep out. And I think he ended up labeling it not a reliable lock because of that. And my argument was, if you know that they're coming out, just push them back in. Understandably, though, it would be cool if they stayed in place no matter what. But I think maybe accidentally he proved in that video that it's a ridiculously strong, like if it's surviving any impact being used as a batoning tool, which no folding knife should be used as, by the way, um, that's crazy. The strength of that system is absurd. It would be cool if they had some system where there was like tension keeping them in, right? Even if they're, even if impact caused them to kind of bounce a little bit. Um, but I, I do like it a lot. Um, I don't think it's a huge win though. Cause it's, it's a little bit, I, I, I think it's really cool. It's really strong and it's fun to manipulate, but it has more steps involved with it than what I would consider easy to manipulate. So it, it's cool. And it has that sort of spring loaded back thing where if they're pushed in to get them to pop back out, you push up on the in the back. It's just kind of like a bunch of unnecessary steps to make you go, ooh, cool. But it does it does work, right? It's just, I don't think it's quite up here. That ca a weird carbine lock from Midgard's Messer, it's it's super strong and it's fun. You know, it's just like the you flip the thing up and you push it forward. 
Uh, the knife I'm talking about is the carbine rifle knife from Midgard's Messer. It's essentially extra safeties, right? Because it's a frame lock and it's also got this long, you know, rod. And then it also has a secondary stop pin that's detached, right? So it's neat. Uh, it's fine. Uh, but it's not, that's about it, right? It's more inconvenient than anything else. Uh, let's also talk about secondary locking pins. Also fine. Technically not a lock. It's just whatever locking system is in place, it adds an additional very strong point of contact to the knife, right? So look at the Max Ace Vortex, right? Knives like that. Tons of Midgard's knives. Lots of Max Ace knives have them. Lots of Midgard's knives have them. It's locked out with a frame lock or a liner lock, and then there's a huge bolt that acts as a second stop pin. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize how much additional strength this gives to your knife. It takes two points of contact and adds literally a third, which is the idea with the triad lock, three points of contact. This takes a questionable locking system like a liner lock, and it turns it into an absolute like powerhouse. Because once that's locked in, once it's screwed all the way in, what you'd have to do to that knife to get that lock to disengage at that point is way beyond abuse. Way beyond abuse. Um, so, yeah. Bolster lock. Um, that would be basically a frame lock where the majority of the frame is hidden underneath a scale. I actually do like that more than a frame lock because, again, it makes it a little easier to manipulate. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this with a frame lock. I just mentioned like excess pressure on it. It, it kind of mashes into the tank. Personally, I like this more. If I'm trying to flip a frame lock or deploy a frame lock with a thumb stud, if you've ever owned a Hinder XM18 and tried to deploy it with a thumb stud, you remember like, what the heck? You put any pressure, number one, the thumb stud's placed a little awkwardly, but you put any pressure on the uh, frame lock, on any frame lock, and it makes it harder to deploy. So you move your hands off the frame lock. Well, then you kind of, sometimes your hand gets in a kind of an awkward uh, position. On a bolster lock, you can just rest it right on the scale because the scale is not going to affect the lock itself, right? So while it is technically the same thing as a frame lock, I think it's slightly easier to manipulate. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say it's glad it exists, right? Sub frame locks like the Kershaw Natrix. It's kind of all in the same, it's fine, right? I mean, it's kind of, it's still like a frame lock, right? Well, I think a lot of people would define a bolster lock as a sub frame lock. I think I've mixed those up before. And a lot of people would just, like when they look at a sub frame lock, they would be like, I wouldn't, I didn't know that that's what a sub frame. Apparently, the, the example I got when I Googled this, <laughs> right before I made this video, professional YouTuber, right? I did my research. Uh... I've, but I've handled this knife before. And I think like the knockout is also technically the same. Or maybe like uh, like the uh, bodega uh, from, um, and I think they, they call it their own thing. But the the um, the bodega from uh, uh, Todd Bag, technically, right? It's like a frame lock that's attached to the frame. I don't think it's any more or less reliable than your standard liner or frame lock. It's just implemented differently. So it's fine. Plunge lock on an automatic knife, right? Like Protex plunge locks. The um, There's a little bit more tension that's pushing that system in. If you notice, like take a uh, Protec Malibu and then take a Protec TR3. You'll notice that there's tension holding that plunge lock into place. I do think that it's more reliable than a regular plunge lock. Um, I don't know that it's easier to, in fact, I would say it's definitely not easier to manipulate one hand because you have to push the button and then you have to apply constant pressure on that blade because there's a coil spring trying to push it back out. Um, but I'm really glad they exist because we have some super awesome switch blades, right? Some modern switch blades because of them, right? So I do like them. Uh, the tie lock from Chris Reeve, that weird thing that, that weird <laughs> thing that like went around the back on the spine of the knife. And then it had like this long, you know, weird praying mantis arm that like went into the frame. Cool. Not fun to manipulate. I, uh, I thought it was I thought it was neat. I was like, wow, this is cool. And it, it seems pretty strong. Kind of, I guess. Uh, not fun to manipulate. Um, um, that's a meh for me. 
I think other people might rank that higher. I did not love that one. The Paragon Warlock lock thing. I, <laughs> I love that thing. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, there's nothing else like that system. And, you know, it seems plenty strong. I don't know. <coughs> I've never done any crazy stuff with the Paragon Warlock. Um, but it is cool. And if you push the pivot in and the, the frame opens up, right, and it's kind of like it's wanting to pull itself back together and you do that and then you can whip the blade out making it, it it's like a gravity knife right super fun to play with i'm not very good at it right but you can go back and watch my reviews it's really cool i love that thing not perfect not perfect by any means because you really have to catch it just right to get that blade to open up but it's super cool oh the triad lock he better put that he better rank that high or i'm gonna unsubscribe you guys knew i was gonna save this one till the end right Come on, you already know where it's going to go. The triad lock is just as strong as, I mean, like basically the atlas lock, the shark lock, the scorpion lock, right? Uh, the atlas lock wasn't invented by Demko, but it was inspired by him. It's definitely one of the strongest locks up here. No, it is not stronger than the shark lock or um, the, uh, uh, the scorpion lock. It's the same but it's not as easy to manipulate, right? However, it, the manipulation is very similar to like Spyderco's um, mid back locks, right? It's definitely better than something like what you use on the Buck 110. Not only is it stronger, but it's easier to manipulate. Um, and it's also just really cool. Like that was the original like ultra powerhouse lock. The triad lock really did change the, the knife game. And we put a big emphasis on uh, folding knife locking systems, right? Even if they are overkill. The triad lock is factually overkill. You don't need that. No one needs the triad lock. If you are pushing the triad lock to its limits, you're using the wrong tool for whatever you're doing factually, right? But is it cool? Yes. Is cold steel good at marketing? Definitely. Uh, the triad lock is not legend, but it is a huge win. The only thing keeping it back from legend is is the ease of manipulation that's just not present there, something like the shark lock. The shark lock is the triad lock, but it's easier to manipulate, right? All of these locks are just easier to, the coil spring crossbar lock, easier to manipulate. Shark lock, easier to manipulate. Super lock, definitely. Deadlock, definitely. Ram lock, definitely. Stealth lock, M lock, Atlas lock, definitely. Look at all these great locks all right, from here up. If you got a knife with one of these and up, Man, yeah, you got a great, in my opinion, you got something great. These are all still fine. These are. The only thing that I really hate, <laughs> the only thing I really hate is that is the ring lock from Open Up. God! God! It's just the only saving grace is like, yeah, it's, it'll probably hold the blade out. You know, like, that's the only thing. Everything else about it I don't like. That's it. Wow, this is a 43-minute video. I thought I'd have this done in like 20 minutes. I must have been talking a lot, right? This is it. Tell me how you feel. Did this uh, did this, did this this list give you the angries? Did it upset your tummy? Do you want to shake your fist at me? Arr, uh, you're, a, you're a poison on the community, Metal Complex. Sorry, my kids are up there uh, making a bunch of noise. We have, a, we have a newborn here, so she's really upset. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. This was fun. Don't take it too seriously. This is just for entertainment. Nothing scientific here. Just my own sort of, you know silly perspective on this stuff um let me know if i left something out that you thought that i should have included again if i've never experienced it i'm not going to rank it right so if it's something i've never experienced on the channel then that's that's probably why but anyways give me your thoughts thanks so much for watching please make sure to follow me on instagram at metal underscore complex and on tiktok at the underscore metal underscore complex if you enjoyed this video leave a like if you'd like to check out my other content i do of course have Lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.